Two million years ago, deep in our dark prehistory, two species of bipedal hominids met on the shores of one of Tanzania's lakes in East Africa. One day, archaeologists would discover the bones of one of these creatures who did not survive the encounter. The find confirmed the belief that our family tree did, in fact, have many different branches, and that, as Darwin predicted, those roots originated in Africa. However, there is a persistent myth that our ancestors lived in an African Garden of Eden, eating berries and fruit, and only occasionally scavenging meat. But the truth is that our meat-loving ancestors were dangerous killers, territorial apemen who drove more peaceable vegetarian hominid species to extinction. Indeed, evolution was more like Planet of the Apes than a slow march of progress. One interesting side note to this story is that recently the idea that humans evolved from knuckle-walking apes has been debunked, and now it seems from fossil evidence of early hominins that lived up to six million years ago were bipedal, and that knuckle-walking, as seen in gorillas and chimps, evolved from an early ancestor that primarily walked on two legs. Paranthropus boise, a species known as a gorilla head on a human body, coexisted with Homo habilis and early Homo erectus in eastern Africa, but it is unclear how they interacted. Paranthropus had huge brow ridges, which would have given him a particularly frightful appearance, and walked fully upright instead of stooping and shambling like a gorilla. Because of its large skull, Paranthropus boisei was thought to be a specialist eater of hard foods like nuts, but it was more likely a generalist feeder of abrasive plants like grasses or underground storage organs. The skull's apparently specialised adaptations, like those of gorillas, may have only been used with less desirable fallback foods, allowing Paranthropus to live in a wider range of habitats than gracile Australopithecines did. Paranthropus is sometimes classified as a member of the Australopithecine family, which include the famous Lucy specimen. Paranthropus might have been able to create Oldoan stone tools and butcher carcasses, and live primarily in wet, wooded environments alongside Homo habilis and Homo erectus. Despite this, Paranthropus never gained fame. Perhaps this is because it was a misfit. It looked like one of our small-brained ancestors, but it lived on Earth long after other ape-like hominins had evolved into big-brained humans. Even among paleoanthropologists, Paranthropus is referred to as the forgotten hominin. They were most likely preyed on by large carnivores of the time, such as big cats, crocodiles, giant hyenas and early humans. For example, to explain why Paranthropus was associated with Aldoan tools at one Kenyan lakeside despite not being the toolmaker, archaeologist Louis Leakey, when describing Homo habilis, proposed that the Paranthropus, who he had originally named Zinjanthropus, was killed by Homo habilis, possibly as food. Intriguingly, Leakey wrote that there is no reason whatever in this case to believe that the skull represents the victim of a cannibalistic feast by some hypothetical, more advanced type of man. There is considerable debate regarding the distinction between Homo habilis and early Homo erectus, so we will use the terms interchangeably in this video. Paranthropus and Homo erectus or Homo habilis may not have been directly competing for food, but we know that humans do not need a direct threat to go to war against another group. According to newly available evidence, hominins were most likely eating other hominins, and given who was eating meat and who was a vegetarian, it seems that Homo erectus or Homo habilis was the perpetrator. As a case in point, scientists have discovered what appears to be the oldest evidence of cannibalism among ancient human relatives. About 1.45 million years ago, ancient human relatives ate one of their own, chowing down on meat from a shinbone, according to cut marks that constitute the oldest definitive evidence that our relatives butchered and made a meal out of one another. Nevertheless, it is unclear whether the cut marks are evidence of cannibalism, because multiple human relatives existed at the time, implying that one hominin species, a group that includes modern and extinct humans, as well as our closely related ancestors, could have eaten another hominin species. The fossilized shin bone, or tibia, was discovered by Louis Leakey in Kenya's Turkana region. It has nine incisions, most likely made with stone tools. The researchers discovered that the cuts are regular, oriented in the same direction, and located where a calf muscle would have been attached to the bone, 
implying that they were made with the intention of removing the flesh for consumption. Three images of animal bone fossils from the same region and time period as the newly analyzed tibia reveal similar cut marks. Archaeologists discovered the incisions while looking for bite marks left by Pleistocene predators on fossilized bones in Kenya's Nairobi National Museum. They were struck by their resemblance to butchery marks on animal bones discovered in the region. These cut marks are very similar to those seen on animal fossils that were processed for consumption. The meat from this leg appears to have been eaten, albeit for nutritional reasons rather than ritual. Researchers also discovered two dents in the bone, which they identified as bite marks left by a large cat, possibly one of the saber-toothed cat species that lived in eastern Africa at the time. But they discovered no human tooth marks on the fossil, suggesting humans removed the meat before eating. Because the cut marks and feline bite marks do not overlap, the researchers cannot determine which occurred first or how the butchered individual died. Human hunters may have discovered the carcass after a large cat slaughtered it. Yet, the location of the cuts suggests that there was still flesh on the skeleton when another hominin slashed the bone for a meal, according to the study, which was published in the journal Scientific Reports. Researchers who first examined the shin bone believed it belonged to Paranthropus. A subsequent analysis identified it as a Homo erectus tibia, but the authors of the new study stated that there is simply insufficient data to assign the bone to a species. According to researchers, the most likely explanation is that this hominin's carcass was eaten by other hominins and scavenged rather than hunted. But this interpretation is speculative. Furthermore, the newly analyzed tibia may not be the oldest undisputed case of African hominins devouring one another, because experts disagree on whether a roughly two-million-year-old skull from South Africa is the oldest. Cut marks left by a stone tool were found on the right maxilla of STW-53, an early hominid partial skull from Sterkfontein Caves in South Africa. The exact classification of this fossil is debatable, but a recent phylogenetic study indicates that it is a close relative of the Demanisi Homo erectus. Recent research suggests that the linear marks were caused by natural processes rather than butchery, but this is disputed. The morphology of the marks, their anatomical placement, and the absence of random striae on the specimen all lend support to the interpretation of this linear damage as cut marks. The marks on the lateral aspect of the maxilla's zygomatic process are consistent with those caused by slicing through the masseter muscle most likely to remove the mandible from the cranium. Although fossil dates are unavailable, and relative faunal dating of the deposit from which the fossil originates is also difficult, the morphology of the hominid skull suggests an early Pleistocene age for the specimen. As a result, this is the first clear evidence that hominids disarticulated each other's remains. The early Stone Age of Africa is associated with simple bone tools. These have been discovered in South Africa's cradle of humankind and are primarily attributed to Paranthropus. In East Africa, a few have been discovered at the Olduvai Gorge beds, dating back approximately 1.7 to 0.8 million years, and are typically made of limb bones and possibly the teeth of large mammals, most notably elephants. The scarcity of such large animals at this location may explain the relative rarity of bone tools, the toolmakers modified bone in much the same way that they did stone, though the Oldervan bone tools are typically attributed to Homo erectus. The presence of both Paranthropus and Homo habilis complicates identification. Prehistoric human hunters are known to have used a variety of tools to take down large animals during group hunts, but long before the throwing spear was invented, our prehistoric ancestors used rocks and sticks to hunt prey on the African plains, Indeed, throwing has played an important role in our evolutionary history, allowing us to hunt prey and compete with other carnivores. Homo erectus had the same body as modern humans by one and a half million years ago, but given his lifestyle and diet, he would have been much more pumped up on male hormones. Therefore, he would have hunted and fought with an animalistic savagery. Remarkably, 
An international team found 55 stone balls near caves at an archaeological site in South Africa's Cradle of Humankind. The Makapan Valley, only 150 miles north of Sterkfontein Caves, contains some of the world's most important paleontological sites. Using stones recovered from sites dating back up to 1.8 million years, the team simulated how an expert would throw them and the damage they could cause to a medium-sized prey animal such as an impala. According to the study, most of the stones would have caused enough damage to kill prey from a distance of over 80 feet. A single blow may not have killed the animal, but multiple stones from a group of hunters may have slowed or injured the prey enough to allow them to finish off their victim with sharpened wooden sticks. The ability to damage or kill prey from a distance not only broadens the food options, but also lowers the risk of close encounters with dangerous prey. In fact, the analysis shows that the rock's weight makes them ideal throwing weapons for Stone Age hunters. Previous research suggested that the spheroid rocks were used to shape or grind other materials. However, the new analysis shows that their weight makes them ideal throwing weapons for Homo erectus. All of this points to them being used in social hunting, where they work together to bring down prey or scare off carnivores after a kill, which is not new information about humans, but being social is a good predictor of large brains and intelligence. Paranthropus remains have been discovered primarily in wet, wooded environments, such as wetlands along lakes and rivers, wooded or arid shrublands, and semi-arid woodlands, with the exception of the savannah-dominated Malawian Chiwondo beds. Its abundance most likely increased during procession-driven periods of relative humidity, while it became less common during periods of aridity. During the Pleistocene period, eastern Africa appears to have had coastal and montane forests, more expansive river valleys may have provided important habitat for forest-dwelling creatures. These East African forests, which were cut off from Central African rainforests by a savanna corridor, would have promoted high rates of interbreeding, particularly during periods of climatic volatility. Australopithecines, such as Paranthropus and early hominins, most likely preferred cooler conditions than later hominins, as no Australopithecine sites were less than 3,300 feet in elevation at the time of deposit. This would imply that, like chimps, they frequently lived in areas with cooler temperatures. But how did Paranthropus, the last of the true ape-men, survive so long? Researchers are finally re-evaluating this lost lineage of our evolutionary tree, prompted by the discovery of more fossils, and their findings indicate that their species was one of the oddest. Paranthropus may have been a toolmaker, but it also probably grazed grass like a cow and communicated through low rumbles like an elephant. The question now is whether the research will help us understand how the last of the ape people survived in a world dominated by large-brained early humans. Paranthropus lived in a world dominated by large-brained early humans. Recent archaeological discoveries such as stone tools reveal how they lived. Australopithecines, like modern chimps and baboons, most likely foraged for food in the cooler morning and evening rather than during the heat of the day. Paranthropus was well suited to a specialised, primarily vegetarian diet. As environmental conditions changed, they may have been unable to adjust to changes in available food. The species could also have been wiped out by interspecies warfare. Like the Neanderthals in Europe, the arrival of a human competitor may have accelerated its extinction. Homo habilis, one of the earliest hominids in the human lineage, was more adaptable and omnivorous, with the ability to make stone tools. Meat-eating Homo habilis and his offspring Homo erectus survived, while plant-eating Paranthropus went extinct about a million years ago. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning, also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.